From Labradoodles to Cronuts, the world loves a hybrid. So today, businesses are taking a smarter hybrid cloud approach using the tools, platform, and expertise of IBM. The world is going hybrid with IBM. Visit ibm.com slash hybrid cloud. On today's episode, we find out how to help your community from home, if the customer is always right, and the perfect time to be a furry. All that and more on this episode of Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Help me out, almighty Lori Beth Denberg. Give me that vital information so I get the red dots. Who do you yeah. The church of Lori Beth is in session and we're reading from the scriptures of vital information. Talk to my goddess and my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Oh my goddess and my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Whoa. Beth Denberg, and welcome to Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Woo! Woo! With me is Clark. Hello! Co host slash friend slash woo hooer. Woo hooer! And we have been hanging out. We just ate some Mediterranean food, or Middle yeah, East food. Yeah, I had some it? chicken laffa. I had some hero. Mm. And some falafel balls. Delicious food to help you podcast by. Exactly. They I what they recommend is that you just smear a little hummus on the microphone. Right. Absolutely. It really gives it that high protein sound. Exactly. And then you gotta sit on an olive leaf for luck. <laughs> is that what you do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I got yelled at by my editor friend for not staying always in front of the microphone. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm notoriously loud. Well, maybe we should tell people that this is the first podcast that we've recorded since we've released the first podcast. Yes. So we now have a little bit of, you know, feedback and comments. Yes, and I've uh, been scolded. <laughs> We all have. We but all never, have. It's like I've never been asked by a like I, you know, in all my acting and stuff, I've never been asked by a sound person to speak up. Right. And in fact, there was one time when a a sound guy ripped his headphones off. Oh no! Because my voice was piercing his brain. Is so but, that earlier in the career or later in you the know, career? I think it was midway through. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. It was. So I'm always like worried about that. But apparently, when you're only talking into a microphone, you're supposed to stay by it. Yeah, that's that's the law. Live and learn. Right? Live and learn. Yeah. That's what I say. I Seriously. am um, petting Bagheera the dog. We're at Clark's house. Socially distanced. Oh, but, uh, we'll have to, uh, maybe we can start putting some pictures and stuff on our uh, on our oh, yeah. Facebook page or website. There's public outcry. What yeah. does Bagheera look like? Exactly. We can post a picture of Bagheera. He looks everyone, like a dog. Everyone can be like, well, I kind of get that she's petting a dog, but yeah. I, I don't really get it. And then you can vote whether Clark should keep Bagheera or put him down. <laughs> we'll do a poll each week. No, oh, he's such a good smush. Yeah. He's such a good smush. He is. He's very polite. You have to invite him to get up on his own couch. Even then, everyone has to be okay with yeah, it, too. Yeah, everyone if there's has to. multiple people in the house, he has to check in. Or is it okay <laughs> if I get up on the couch? So... Uh, He's a good boy. All Are right. you ready for some new questions for this week? I am. Let's see what we got. All right. This is going to be fun. Let's do some questions. Let's help some people. Here we go. All right. First question of the day. And it is from a, a very nice lady named Lynn. 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 And Lynn uh, is from Facebook land. And she asks, I am in my 70s. Wow. Oh, yeah. And very, very bored. Mm. Isolating inside these days is hard and stressful. Cooking and eating each day, dot, 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 too much. <laughs> I love that line. That's my favorite line. <laughs> Thinking Judge Judy is my friend. Analyzing people and family constantly. What's a diva to do? <laughs> Let me know what you would do to help the community from your home. Well, that that last part kind of came out of nowhere, right? We were on a, a nice track somewhere, and then we just steered right off the road. But I like that she's like at the end of it is so productive. Yeah, I thought she was going nowhere, but then yeah. at the end she like skids <laughs> into the right lane. It's amazing. All right, first of all, it's important for you, Lynn, to know for everyone to know 
Judge Judy is your friend. <laughs> yes. Judge Judy is the glue holding this country together. Sure, sure. And um, she's the no-nonsense voice of reason that we need so sorely. Right. She she isn't, it's like Batman. She's not the hero we need, but she's the hero we deserve. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So Judge Judy, shout out. I'm sure she's listening. <laughs> she always does. Um, and uh, to just go forth knowing she is your friend. Take mm -hmm. that comfort. Um, a lot of us are bored. A lot of oh. us are homebound. This is, this is again, to stamp this episode in time. We are deep into the COVID pandemic. Deep into. Deep into, and we're actually at the, you know, starting up a new wave of lockdown, shit's bad. Death. Yeah. Destruction. Death, exactly. So we are going to be in our houses bored. We are going to be doing things dot, dot, dot too much. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's just the world we live in now. It is. So the question, how would you help your community from home? Right. Is a really excellent question. Yeah. Way better than where I thought she was going with this. Yeah. Where did you think she was going? Well, she's like, you know, Judge Judy is my friend. I'm analyzing people. She's a diva. I thought it was going to be a way more floofy kind of question uh, of just like, oh, what should I do with my weekends? But it was very like, oh, how do I help my community from home? Well, yes. that, that's that's a very interesting question. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, and it's important because we're at home. People are depressed. People are. And when I say people, I mean me, too. Yeah, yeah seriously. Know, there can be hopelessness. There can be depression. There can be lack of purpose. Mm -hmm. So reaching out to do something for someone else, to do something for your community is a real, you know, boost to yeah. the old self-esteem, a real boost to feeling useful. Absolutely. And what I would say off the top of my head is, you know, we are we are through the election ish. There are still um, some elections going on in our country. There's still political stuff going on. Totally. I uh, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and she suggested to me that I. Um, look into doing some phone banking stuff. Oh, to yeah, do, absolutely. You know, a couple of the things, you know, Georgia's still up in the air. It is. We've so got. What can I do to help Georgia from from Los Angeles? Absolutely. Uh, that kind of thing. But also there are tons of nonprofits everywhere. Yeah. There's probably 10 nonprofits a stone's throw from your house. Yeah, so. totally. Something you're interested in. For me, maybe I call a local animal shelter. I see mm -hmm. what they need. I've mm -hmm. had friends that have, you know, said, hey, the, the local animal shelter needs blankets. Yeah. Because doggies are there and they're on cement or the blankets we have are yuckified or right. whatever it is. So my friend went, you know, to people and said, hey. I'm, you know, please donate blankets. Mm. And she went and picked them up. Even now in this day and age, you could put them on the porch, mm. you know, yeah. put this on the porch and I don't, we can do a contactless right. Con delivery. <laughs> exactly. Um, just like Domino's. Just like our Mediterranean food was. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, you know, there's probably something like that that you could do for a number of nonprofits that are working in your area for the community. Totally. It's best to help the people who are already helping. Right. Because that's really helpful to me. When I have a friend, this is getting dark, but no, like no. I have a friend who's husband, wife, deaf father, whatever's in the hospital. Yeah. I say, what can I do for you? Right. What can I go Check their mail. I bring them food. I, it's like they're busy helping someone else. Right. They're taking on something else. So I'm just kind of like, how Trying can to I help prop them. you up? Yeah. So all the people that are fighting for doggy faces right. and kitty faces. Right. You know, and whatever. There's probably rabbits there. The yeah. lemur. A couple of snakes. I'm going to go check out a used lemur. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. You know, of course, I'm going to default to saying something about dogs. Sure. Of course. But any... You know, nonprofit, you could, you know, fundraise, you could check into something you already have an interest in. Right. And put out to whatever organization, hey, I'm here to help. What do you need? Absolutely. That's good. Uh, can I throw something at you? I hope so. What about now? This is a weird, radical thought. Uh oh. Ready? And it's small. It's small. Okay. 
find somebody. She's talking about how do I uh, help the community, right? Mm -hmm. What if there's a person in your community, in your neighborhood that you know you don't like, that put up the posters for the person that you didn't want to <laughs> vote for, whoever it was. It doesn't matter what yeah. side it was. They're on the opposite side as you. Maybe what you can do is to just turn the cheek and be nice. Make ah. make a plate of cookies and just bring it over and leave it for them and be like, you know what? I hope your life is doing better right now. And yeah. I hope you're doing OK. Maybe just killing people with kindness might help out. That is good. It's, it's small, right? It's yeah. not as big as like you're saying, like uh, helping out the people that are already helping people out. But maybe a little if, if a lot of people do a little thing. It becomes a big thing, you know? Maybe yeah, we could like just that. start making friends with people who hate us. That is a large list for me. So I'm going to have to get started. <laughs> no, well, I, I do like that. I have do to start like a that. second podcast. As things, I know. <laughs> As things, you know, calm down. Yeah. It's like, okay. Maybe Where can I mend a fence? Exactly. That was now's, trampled? now's the time to mend. I like that. Right. I like that. Oh, thought I'd throw that out. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, Lynn, I hope that helps you out. I hope that uh, you can take some advice there and run with it, right? Let's uh, let's move on to question number two. Okay. Qu question number two is from Dolphin Delphine, which I doubt is her uh, legal name. But uh, <laughs> she asks, uh, is it better to stay single if all the people you're trying to date just want some booty? And then a heart emoji. Ah, well, I want to say thank you for your question. Mm, and thank you for the heart emoji. Yeah, thank you. That, <laughs> I feel it. Um, if you are just dating people, quote unquote, that want do duty. Oh, <laughs> your son's going to love that I said that. Yeah, he likes duty. He's five. Yes, he is. So poop is really funny. There's nothing funnier. And I'm 45 <laughs> and poop is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you're going to booty it up, if you're going to Netflix and chill, uh, technically you're still single. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're not into that, then don't fall into that because I can tell you from experience saying, well, I'm sure this will turn into something more. Right. I'm sure that this isn't all it could be. You know, right. people let you know who they are. People let you know what they're after. Right. If you're into having some fun. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Exactly. But if you're going into something that's very well established as being casual or less than casual. Okay. And I need to say whether it's casual or not, please use protection. <laughs> yes. Please use protection. Thank you. And maybe don't go out um, on one night stands right now during COVID. Yeah. That's, that would be horrible. Yeah. It's not a great plan, <laughs> yeah. but, um, yeah. No booty calls unless you're willing to bubble up with that person. Yeah, no, no booty calls except for your pre-approved pod. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, there's those there's those 10 kids from the same class that have gotten together and they all keep right. playing and they all, you know, are able to be together. Right. And then the parents, what's going on there? Right. He's it's in the bowl, my friend. Junior high after dark. <laughs> But uh, yeah, have some fun if you want safely, if you can. Mm -hmm. And um, if that's not what you're into, don't torture yourself by getting involved in a casual thing where the other person just is like, oh, this is just fun. And, you know, you're sitting there like I have going, when is this going to turn? How nice can I be? How much can I give until right. this turns into a real thing? And then it's like, oh, that was a great four years. Right. Maybe I'd rewind and cut it off when I knew I, when I knew I should have, when I could have, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But um, thank you for using the word booty. It makes me feel very hip and in the vernacular sure sure and uh yeah so i hope that helps yeah that was really it's some good advice um I, I agree there there's really you gotta have a little respect for yourself you gotta love yourself yes before yes. you can have other people love you exactly so uh let's move on to question number three here okay. we go question number three is a very serious question from uh, a young person maybe they're old i don't know named chung you 89 okay 
And Chung Yu asks, when is it okay to be a furry? So, LB, when is it okay to be a furry? Wow. Well, should we explain what a furry is to anyone who might not know? Sure, sure. Yeah. A furry is a person that likes to get dressed up as like uh, mascot characters, like the big suits that have the the big heads on them that are all covered in fur. It's like a giant living Muppet. Okay. Right. That's what a furry is. And then you start delving into it. Yeah, there's, you know, the the sexual uh, element of the furries and there's the non-sexual element. There's just, you know, people like dressing up like crazy animals. Yes. So that's uh, that's what being a furry is. OK, well, thank you for that explanation. You're welcome. Uh, when is it OK to be a furry? Uh, definitely in church. Sure, 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 sure. It's a uh, well, it, you know, it would it would depend I would say it would be okay to be a furry anywhere it's okay to wear a bikini. Oh, yeah. Like, let's put it that way. So out on the beach, by the pool. Yes. That's a good place or to be what, a furry. You know, walking around. The thing, okay, uh, I have to now tell a story. I don't know if Clark remembers this. Mm. But, and it's not, it's it's a common thing. Growing up, I was terrified of people in costumes. Yes. Terrified. Yes. And that affected us a lot because after high school, after you finished, was it Steve Harvey? Once you finished no, one of the shows that. that you came back and then all of a sudden you and I got Disneyland passes. For yeah. Years we got passes. Yep. And every time we would go, we would have to like steer clear of specific characters. Yeah. If I saw one coming, I would freak out. Yeah. I would run into a store. Like a panic attack. Yeah. Like a, like a panic attack. And I was just so scared of them. I don't know if it, if it's, I mean, you can't see them. I didn't think they were real right but there's something was just i was terrified of them right and i was um two instances come to mind when i was in nickelodeon studios like doing all that back in the day yeah i had said that because you know there were some rugrats coming Mm. around you know we're we're in universal studios right it is a theme park it's a theme park and there's nickelodeon you know animals and costumes right. going all around. Right. Cat um, dog. And I, poor cat dog. Um, <laughs> how does he poop? It's the only question <laughs> yeah, I know. anyone ever wanted to know about it's cat true. dog. true. Like he couldn't have a hole on the bottom. I know zero about cat dog. Show. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I had mentioned that to somebody that I was working with yeah. and they were like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And then after when they saw me freak out and start to cry when the Rugrats walked through the studio, they were like, whoa, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, let me tell you how I got over it. Oh, OK. I went to Dollywood. Oh, you loved Dollywood. Dollywood was a beautiful moment in my life. OK, let me let me tell you of uh, the audience something. OK, I've known you for many, many years. I have never seen you more excited about a location than <laughs> Dollywood. <laughs> You've was, traveled oh. everywhere. And Dollywood was just, it made an impression on you. It was spectacular. Oh, that's awesome. Because, I mean, it was just this, we had gone there because they were starting a new Nickelodeon show at Dollywood. Mm. You know, like you'd go into the 2.30 Nickelodeon show. Sure. And so we were there to kind of do some press, me and another guy from another show. And um, so we go and, you know, we go to the theme park. We do all the stuff. The Southern hospitality is just like pouring over Oh, us. nice. It was so nice. But no Dolly, right? No, no, I did meet Dolly. Oh, you did my, meet Dolly. I had my picture made with Dolly. Oh, how cool. That's where I also met Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop. <laughs> um, yes. Nice. So uh, we are doing this Nickelodeon show. Yeah. And then we're doing that with them. The part of it was this big parade down okay. the main drag of, is it Pigeon Forge? I don't, uh, write us back and let us know that I got that wrong. Um, <laughs> down the main drag of the town that Dollywood is in. Main All Street. All these different floats. But it wasn't in Dollywood. It was in the town. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So, I'm going to be on this float and I'm going to be on this float with costume characters i believe they were dressed as the rugrats okay and so i'm trying to deal with that yeah but what happened was 
the people in the costumes were the people that were in the show and I had already met them. Oh. And because this was a special opportunity, they didn't have to be silent. Like they cannot betray that they are not the real characters like you would do a kid in the theme park. Yes. So I'm on this parade float, which is always a surreal. I've been on a parade float a few times in my life and it's like, what's happening? (laughs) Um, And I was with, you know, a Tommy and an Angelica. Okay. Furry, basically. But but people that you met earlier. Exactly. So I'm next to the Tommy and John, that was the host of the Nickelodeon show at the park, is in there. And I'm talking to him and I'm looking through the mesh to see his eyes. Right. So I had to really get up close and personal. Mm. And then I... I kind of got over it. Nice. Then it's okay. But I was with <laughs> years before when I was not over it. You know, there's specific ones that are worse than others. Right. Seeing a Mickey is not as bad as seeing a Frankenstein at Universal Studios. Sure, sure. Universal has a lot of scary characters. Scary characters. Yeah. But I was with our friend Farah. Yes. Yeah. Farah from high school. Broadway sensation. Broadway sensation Farah. Um, and well, fair Alvin, we can say sure, that. Sure, sure. And, um, I was with her at Disneyland and she cracked up because we were coming out of Tomorrowland. Now everyone look up your Disneyland map <laughs> and the beast from Beauty and the Beast was coming. That's Ooh. a specifically disturbing one. Big. If, if you're going to be disturbed, he's big and he's kind of hunched over and yeah. he's a monster. Yeah. I mean, he needed to find true love to not be a monster, which I think is true of a lot of us. Right. But I just took off. Ooh. I took off in the other direction. And when I find, ran into a store and I was just like freaking out. And once he had passed, I went back and Farrah's like cracking up. And I'm like, what? And she said, it just looked like you were going to run to the edge of the earth. <laughs> it looked like you weren't going to stop. <laughs> And like you'd go through a wall and there'd be an LB shaped hole in the wall, like a cartoon. Oh. But um, so it's been, and, and you know what? It's not like if the beast showed up, I would be like, hey, I'd still be like, hey, you know. <laughs> but just being able to have that close interaction with some costume character furry esque people helped. Helped, and that I knew that. I mean, not everyone's going to get that chance. Yeah. Okay. If you have a fear, make sure that you're uh, a special guest at Dollywood, right? So that the you can Nickelodeon show. You can and that you're in a parade float. <laughs> right. Not everyone is going to have that opportunity, right? But that is how I got through it. Can I tell you one? I'll try and be quick. A uh, f- uh, furry story. My buddy played Santa Claus at Universal Studios. Okay. And he was in another parade, right? And this parade had, you know, fairies and and elves and snowmen. And the snowmen oh. were furries. So it was made to look like the three piles of snow. But okay. they put these snowmen on rollerblades. Oh, dear. So now my buddy is Santa and he's waving at all the kids and they're <laughs> pulling out. And it's almost the very start of the parade, too. And I guess they drive over a little lip. Okay. That they have to get, I guess the gate closes or something. And he gets out and then he watches as this snowman hits this little lip and just bails, just (laughs) completely falls face first. And the head pops off of the body. And now there's a uh, uh, Frosty the Snowman head rolling down the street (laughs) and it ends up right in front of a pack of kids and the carrot nose just like points at the kids <laughs> as it's like rolling to a stop and they're just screaming and so he starts laughing he turns over and he watches this guy that was in the snowman costume get up and then he grabbed his neck and pulled it up so that you couldn't see his human head <laughs> and just started screaming get me my head <laughs> And these kids are like getting traumatized oh, from this dear. frosty head. I love that story. I, I, there's something too funny about Frosty's carrot nose pointing at some kids. And here's how my ridiculous brain works when you're like, and he fell down. I honestly thought he's going to melt. <laughs> Yeah, his his felt is not going to melt. His felt was not melting. Yeah, no, not very uh, melting. So when is it okay to be a furry? Whenever your heart desires. Exactly. And when it's not, the police will let you know. <laughs> 
Excellent advice. Excellent, excellent. All right. Uh, let's go to a fourth question here really quick. This is from Petula. Okay. Petula wants to know, is the customer always right, even when they're being ridiculous or nasty? Oh. Mm. Well, my first reaction is, hell no. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, that I actually kind of relish the opportunity to call someone out. Right. Especially I am I am as nice as possible to anyone. I mean, in general, I'm pretty nice. Absolutely. But especially to anyone who works behind a counter. Oh, yeah. Because I am just sure that they get shit. All, the time all day from long. Terrible people. Yep. So not only am I nice, but I'm I'm just really respectful of what they might go through. Right. So when I see, and this doesn't happen all the time, not like some weird vigilante. <laughs> like I'm going everywhere. But um, you know, I know that employees cannot say what they want right. unless it gets really i mean we see all of those you know videos of customers just being awful and the yep. people there have to say i'm sorry ma'am you'll have to leave it's store policy right or i'd love to help you know you can't at when you're working there go you cunt get yeah exactly get out of here exactly you in the gut <laughs> um <laughs> Otherwise, Walmart would just be a melee every day. Right. It would be like MMA. Yeah. But if I can, I try. I, I went to um, a chicken restaurant. Sure. That shan't be named. That shan't be named. I don't know if it shouldn't or it won't. But anyway, I went to Popeye's. Sure. To get the sandwich that broke the internet. Right. And this was just like a week ago. Hmm. And I'm in there and a woman actually, I'm waiting outside because there was a decent line of people six feet apart. Right. And I'm waiting outside. Right. COVID. For, yeah, exactly. covid -y, chicken -y. Sure. So, and this woman comes out, uh, a customer, and she was just like, oh. And I was like, well, what's wrong? Because I also talk to strangers all the time. Sure. Which, um, le if there's any uh, listeners under 18, <laughs> I'm not recommending that. But I was just <laughs> saying, you know, what's wrong? And she was just like, the people in there are just being awful to the guy working. And I'm just like, oh, no. Mm. So I get in there and I'm waiting in line. I just get to the top. You know, I get to the top of the line. Right. I get to talk to this guy. Right. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he's just like beaten down. Oh. He's like, it's been rough. And oh. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm nice yeah. as can be. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I generally usually am. Sure. But don't get my fucking chicken order wrong. Yeah, no, no please. Um, even then I'd be like, I'm really <laughs> Excuse sorry. me. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I'm just nice to him and then I'm waiting and then these three people come in there in line. One of them is a girl and she can't be much more than 20 mm. and she doesn't have a mask on. COVID mask mask. Of course. And the uh, guy behind the counter says, you have to have a mask on to be in here. It's like what you say to people. Right. When they come in your establishment, she didn't do it. She kind of put her shirt up over her nose and mouth for a second oh, yeah. and then didn't care. Ugh. And then he asked her again. And this time I'm waiting for my food. I hit the microphone. That's okay. I'm sorry to my editor. <laughs> um, and I walked over to her. I didn't walk over to her. I walked around. Right. And I said, you need to put your mask on or you need to get out of here. Like I just, I just got involved. Yeah. Because good. At this point, it's not just being rude to a employee. Right. You're being rude to everyone in the restaurant. And, and. I, I don't understand. Like, she wasn't stupid. Right. I mean, she was stupid. But, you know, I was just and she goes, do you work here? And I was like, doesn't matter if I work. Here. Like, she was just so ridiculous. Yeah. And I actually said, because she was in there with two other people. And I actually looked at them and I said, you should be ashamed of your friend. Ooh. And what was funny was they looked like affected by that. Yeah, like they were. But the girl said. Um, just so you know, they aren't my friends. They're doing me a favor, which I was like, that's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. And I just. What said, an yeah. odd thing to <laughs> correct you on. Just what? so you know, I hate these people, but I'm getting something out of it. Right. That's weird. Yeah, it was it was really distressing. And in the end. You know, she I think she did leave, but I just said, you know, I tried and everyone else in the restaurant was like, yeah, yeah I know. What can you do? You know, and the guy behind the counter was like, you know, thank yeah. you. 
Yeah. But I was I was just kind of like dumbfounded by yeah. that. Yeah. Dumbfounded. That's by crazy. That. You had to dole out a little LB justice. Yes, but so the customer is not always right. Right. This is a story. I was in the Ralphs. Mm. I was in the Ralphs in Studio City. Okay. I used to go there all the time because it's open 24 hours and I'm a night owl. Sure. And I went in there kind of late and it's pretty empty. And there's this woman there. There's this woman going nuts about something. Mm. You owe me a dollar. This says this on the on the coupon and like going off and i know these people you know they're my they're my ralph's employees i don't know the woman right right she's there with her husband and she is just going off about 50 cents something and you know the people are being nice well ma'am this is what the sign said you know well you go it was this huge thing and her husband's like egging her on oh and it was like and, and then the the cashier was just rolled her i said what the hell and she just rolled her eyes and was like this isn't the first time. Oh. So this whole, I mean, this has got to be 15, maybe 20 years ago. I wow. don't know. Wow. But I think about this woman like once a week. Yeah. Because what I don't know, because her husband was egging her on and I was like, this seems to be some sort of elaborate foreplay. <laughs> right. And I don't know if she right. gets home and she gets, uh, Fucked or spanked. Right. I don't know if this was like, you've been very bad at the Ralph's again. Right. Covered. Max, Max. You can get to cover you up in the 35 cent off peanut butter. Yes. It was very, I, I swear, I think about this woman like once a week. That's weird. And that's what's real. And I like, I'm just dying. I was dying every yeah. time. Like, I want to run into her again. Yeah. I run into her again. That's the kind of person that all of a sudden you find out tomorrow has a their own reality show. Yeah. So the customer is the customer is obviously not always right. If you're in a position to, you know, if you're super corporate like Ralph's and you have to follow some protocol, whatever. But if you're in a smaller, you know, your own business, if you're, you know, a hairdresser, if you're, you know, doing something really personalized like that. Then you don't have to take shit. Absolutely not. You don't have to take shit. And and if you're willing and able to give up the money then you know because that's pretty much what people think well i'm paying your right, salary and right I'm entitled but it's like no 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 thanks yeah i don't need your money exactly you can you can go or now i don't need your money more than i need my dignity yeah exactly you know? exactly so the customer is not always right and depending on your situation you can choose to say you're done. Get out of here. Or hopefully maybe have someone like me in there that I'll just stick up and point right. out the ridiculousness. Ugh. I hope. So watch out if you see me in an establishment and you're acting poorly. <laughs> I'll put my foot up your ass verbally. Maybe you can hire the LB team. Exactly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> if you can find her. <laughs> if you can find her. Uh, all right. Support for this podcast comes from CDW and Adobe. At CDW, we get your organization can be demanding. We know you're in there. I know. The marketing team's outside my office. They want their Adobe update now. Give us that update. With Adobe's value incentive plan, deployed by the experts at CDW, you can quickly and easily manage software subscriptions for the whole team. On Acrobat and Creative Cloud? All included. Cool. Guys, I'm coming out. Don't hurt me. Hey, there he For is. a satisfied digital workforce, you need Adobe and IT orchestration by CDW. People who get it. Find out more at cdw.com slash adobe. Hey, everybody. It's Elaine Welteroth, and I'm hosting a new podcast called Built to Last by American Express, where we will dive deep into the stories, history, and continued legacy of small businesses that shape American culture. Our debut season will focus on Black-owned small businesses that need our support now more than ever. In each episode, we feature the story of a Black business trailblazer that has inspired a modern Black-owned business. First up is Pinky Cole of Atlanta's food truck turned restaurant, Saletti Vegan. We'll also chat with Hanifa Muemba, the cutting edge designer behind the Hanifa 3D digital fashion show. Plus, we'll check in with Issa Rae, our modern day Renaissance woman. We hope that it encourages all of our listeners to support these businesses as well as the Black-owned businesses in your own communities. Tune in for these amazing stories and others on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. 
Well, uh, that kind of wraps up the question segment oh, okay. for now. Uh, let's move on to our next segment, which is called... And now, another rousing segment of LB Helps You Waste Your Life. Yay! <laughs> Waste your life. LB, what helps you waste your life? Uh, and uh, so, yeah, this is a, a going to be a reoccurring segment every once in a while yeah. where uh, LB and myself, we kind of uh, curate fun, crazy, interesting things that you can do with your time since we all have so much copious amounts of time on our, yeah. time on our hands. So today, what would you like to to recommend to our, our friends out there? Today, I want to recommend. Now, I, I go down the rabbit hole. Sure, sure. Of course. Which is looking at the, you know, clicking on someone's uh, video that they put up on Facebook and then scrolling down and watching the next one and watching the next one and watching the next one. Yeah. So one that I found um, and then got really into was these guys. They're called How Ridiculous. Yes. You know them. I know them. I love them. And. Australians. They are Australians. It's like whatever, four guys, something three like guys. three guys. And they apparently, Clark was telling me, why don't you tell me how they got started? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I started doing research when we realized we were going to talk about them in our show. I was like, oh, maybe I'll look into looking at some of their videos and stuff uh, or some of their older videos. And I found out that their first video was actually done, uh, pr- uh, published in uh 2009 so they are an 11 year old group of these three guys that have been putting out just hundreds of videos the first i don't know 20 30 videos that they put out they were just doing trick shots with basketballs yeah 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 shooting basketball off of a mountain into a basketball hoop or off of a really tall building uh and then maybe about five years into their basketball run, <laughs> they did this a video that got really uh, a lot of hits, a lot of big attention on this video. Uh, it got a, you know over 8 million views where they toss a basketball off a dam and ah. then they spin it and you can see it. There's this weird science effect yeah, exactly. where the ball like floats off into the distance. Yeah, they drop it without spinning it and it just kind of drops and then he floats it and it like flies away to... To never land. Yeah, and it's like the same. He doesn't like push it out or anything. He, it's really interesting to watch. But that kind of was their springboard to fame. Which I never saw any of that. I came into this later in their game when they're doing what they do now, yeah. which is going to some place. I think it's like a, a park, like yeah, a national park in Australia. Park. It's something that I can't believe is legal for them to be there and doing it. there's this gigantic tower 45 45 meters, meters yes which is times three feet uh is what, uh 135 135 yeah 35 for our american friends sure um and they're australian and one of them will go up and drop something extraordinarily heavy from 45 meters up onto something else. Right. Now, that could mean we're dropping an anvil onto a trampoline. Right. Or it could be a car that gets dropped onto a boat. Yeah. They just are dropping heavy shit on heavy shit. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's fascinating. (laughs) It's fascinating and it's mesmerizing. They go into, so every time, each video probably has about three or four drops in it. Yeah. And each drop gets, okay, so then they they drop the the lazy boy off the edge onto the the trampoline, and then they go into like a two-minute slow-mo edit (laughs) of that, the the lazy boy slowly hitting the trampoline and bouncing 20 meters away. It's it's really fun to watch. It's really exciting. And I want to say overall, their aim is, is really impressive. spectacular. It's really impressive. Wow. Because they really nail it for, for like most of the stuff. Especially if anyone's out there listening, if you want to go look on this, this is on YouTube. These are group guys on YouTube. And uh, the one that I would recommend would be anything with the Hulk fist. <laughs> the Hulk fist is like their their bullet they know how to hit uh, a penny with this yeah. <laughs> giant really hulk big. fist i mean the hulk fist has got to be the size of a beach ball oh yeah like a big beach a ball big beach ball yeah 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 and so they're really fun but there's these, this one thing that's like crazy to me they're all really nice to each other yeah it seems like they like each other yeah and and, and it's it's weird because what i'm used to is americans <laughs> you know what i'm used to is those videos of people like horrible 
horribly wiping out on their skateboard. Right. And before the friend knows that the skateboarding friend isn't dead, they're just cracking up. Right. So the f- I keep waiting for these guys to give each other shit or whatever, but they're all just, they're so excited about what they're doing, which makes me more excited. Yeah, I really like I these like guys. I like when they drop, like they'll drop a giant arrow yeah. onto a refrigerator. <laughs> right. Like the bouncing is cool. They do a lot with the uh, trampoline. Right. I mean, it's all really cool. It's We're gonna all put, we good. should put uh, a link. A link on the website. Yes, we at will. Askgloriebeth.com. Or on the, the Facebook page. Or on the Facebook. Or Instagram. Whatever we can do. We'll we can, you can put a link on the Instagram? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll just put it out. Now uh they are fabulously uh <laughs> successful without yeah. my stamp of approval. Seriously, they do not need us helping them. No, but, if anything, yeah. I would ra- I would really uh like them to mention <laughs> us. <laughs> I know, right? That would be really helpful. Helpful. They drop me. Hey guys, if you're listening, <laughs> you can drop me from 45 meters onto, onto the, the Hulk tra- fist. Onto the Hulk fist. No, I'll ride the Hulk fist like the guy riding the bomb sure. in uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor, Love. yeah, exactly. And um, we'll jump. I mean, they do. They drop anvils on bulletproof glass. Yeah, like it's and there's, amazing. There's like this sciency aspect to it, but it's really just a like kind of buddies crushing exactly. stuff exactly yeah. buddies crushing stuff and it's so exciting it is so this is how I'm helping you waste your life here's the rabbit hole I go down please join me Yay. to the detriment of your entire life uh, paying attention to your kids or getting your work done how ridiculous is a great little you know thing to fascinate you absolutely I love this and it's really fun I'm glad we were able to recommend it but I believe we are at that time where we need to do our final question. Okay. All right. So here is our final question. This is from Susanna. Susanna asks, my estranged sister is having a pirate themed birthday party for her three-year-old in the middle of a pandemic. Ooh. My parents are old and have tons of pre-existing conditions, making them high risk. They've been careful for the most part, but my sister's in-laws are going to be there and their circle is much bigger. There are zero ICU beds available right now in their town. What should I do? Oh, my goodness. That's Susanna. Wow. Yeah, right? What world do we live in right now? I mean, we live in this world and we need to act accordingly. We do. Um. That is rough, Susanna. First thing I want to say is you are not obligated to go to this party. Yeah. Um, also, I want to say three year olds not going to know the difference. Yeah, I cannot tell you. My my son is five. He can't remember two months ago. We yeah. watched uh, Goonies and he had not one I, thing that he remembers. I have been hitting him in the head. <laughs> they dropped an anvil onto his head. For right. 45 for 45 minutes. meters. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and you start out by saying, Susanna, that this is your estranged sister. Right. So there's already, like, right out front, this is a kind of an issue to start with. Yeah. Um, What I would say is the most you can do is talk to your parents. Yes. If you're worried about that. Yeah. You know, you can try to talk to your sister. You can try to talk to anybody. Right. But if your concern is, you know, my parents are old and have pre-existing conditions. I'm in that same boat that my my dad, you know, is right. older and of has course. pre-existing conditions. So I'm really careful. And I, you know, that's my main concern as far as COVID stuff goes is what is it I have to do in the world? Right. Because I want the least chance of bringing something back to my dad. Right. Absolutely. But you got to also keep in mind that for some reason, not everyone's going to be doing that. Yeah. Which is. And yeah. no matter what you try and no matter what you say, they just are going to fight on it, fight on it, fight on it. And at a certain point, you can't even you can't really do much. Yeah. But you can talk to your parents, yes. see where they're at. Talk to your parents. Maybe only one of them has to go. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's like Sophie's Choice. Which right? one do you love Ex- least? Exactly. Um, no, you know, find, talk to them, tell them your concerns, see where their right. concerns are. Tell them maybe they should wear doubled up masks. Yeah. Maybe, they, you know, they can just be extra prepared. Yeah. Or they can not go. Or hopefully they could just not go. We don't know, obviously, the whole situation of where they're at with it. Right. But this is what's so 
difficult. Like when I said, oh, what world do we live in? It's like we live in this one. And now we're having to make choices. We're coming up on right. Thanksgiving right. and Christmas. And we all need to make really educated choices. And when I say educated, I mean realistic. Right. Because, of course, I want to go hang out with my friends exactly. on Thanksgiving, you know, after we do a family thing. I'm always going out to, right. you know, the friends after party and hanging out. And, uh, you know, one year I went to my friend Robin and Ian's house. And my friend Wes was there and we ended up watching a video of a fire. Not a fire, like in a fireplace. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just like and a building left and left. building burning down. No, it was just, you know, kind of that. It wasn't quite a Yule log because it was like a guy stoking it. And oh, wow. It. But just this fireplace. And we watched it all night. Wow. Like Crazy. It was, it's one of our fondest memories. And it's also one of our memories where we go like, what? <laughs> and we were sober, all of us. This wasn't wow. back in the day. When, That's crazy. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, talk to your family. Yeah. And see where they're at. And and that's the most you can do because you can't force your parents yeah. to not go. And you can't force your sister to not have a birthday party for yeah. her kid. Look, I, unfortunately, we are at a point in time in this country where we everyone has to do something that we've always uh, uh, commended just a small group of people, right? We've always commended the people that have sacrificed. Yeah. They sacrifice for their country. They sacrifice for the present, whatever it is, they're mm. sacrificing. Well, you know what? Now is our time. Yeah. Our time to sacrifice is right now. And instead of having to lay out, lay down our lives for COVID or the president, all we have to do is just stay inside and not go to our friend's house and maybe just talk to people on Zoom instead yeah. of in person. Yeah, it's not the biggest hardship. It's really not. Although what I'm thinking, though, about this pirate birthday party yeah. is part of this is, you know, stay six feet apart and all this kind of stuff. Don't touch your mouth and your don't touch your eyes. Right. And if everyone there has an eye patch because they're a pirate, yeah. you're already 50 percent down on that possibility. See? So I don't know. It might be a clever theme, but I like it. Susanna, you got to do what you feel comfortable with yeah. and do your hope, best to just hope that your parents understand that it's just a three year old's party. And if they <laughs> sacrifice this year, they get to be with him for his fourth. Exactly. Oh. Well, thanks. I know this is get a little heavy and this is kind of the times we live in. Yeah. <sighs> oh, I hate that. Oh my goodness. Let's but shake it off. We're shaking it off. And actually, I think we're done. Oh, we're done. That was it. That was our last question. Well, it's always good to end on a laugh. Right. Come on. <laughs> you always want to end the show on a big, happy uh, story. Yeah. All right. Oh. Well, we'll think better next time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you have any questions for Lori Beth, I would hope that you would send it to us at AskLoriBeth.com. Uh, you could also hit us up on all the socials. We're on uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook. You can leave a message with your name and where you're from at one eight five five denberg It's one eight five five 855 denberg Leave us a message. Leave us a question. We can't wait to talk to you people. We're having so much fun. We are having so much fun, and we love to give out some help. We hope we helped someone today. Yeah. We, at the very least, I hope we didn't hurt someone well, today. Well, except for maybe Baggy. Baggy's Baggy. probably sadder and depressed. He's a, yeah, ba ba Bagheera the dog. We'll put a picture on. We'll put a picture of him on at his happiest. Yeah. And at his happiest, he looks like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Exactly. He's like, I'm a dog. <laughs> so, yeah, please hit us up at Ask Lori Beth on the socials. And call us. We want to hear your voice. We, we really do. your tone of voice. Yes. So, thanks so much for listening. Thank you, Clark. And we will see you next time. Woo! Bad Advice stars Lori Beth Denberg and Clark Crozier. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Balin, and part of the Seltzer Kings Network. Our theme song is written and performed by Natty Ward. If you or someone you love is in need of some bad advice, you can submit your own question on our socials, all of which are Ask Lori Beth, or on our website at AskLoriBeth.com, or for a nostalgic twist, you can call 1-855-DENBERG. That's right, 1-855-336-2374, and leave your question there. Thanks for listening.